guys, and welcome back to me making figures as an excuse to paint sad anime boys I simp for. Today we're making my favorite gunslinger edgelord, Percy. Since Percy is anime AF, he requires an anime figure. I sketched a vague figure for his armature base. His armature is made out of wire, with tape on his joints for easy posing. I'm going to start sculpting his face on this mixing tray. Start with a ball of clay smooshed onto the surface, then begin cutting the excess to define his V-shape. And the sides to create his face shape. Soften and blend the cut marks. Trim the top edges a bit, since most faces don't have flat sides. Unless you do, then it's normal and beautiful. Add guidelines for symmetry. Scoop out his eye holes, which is a terrifying sentence. Then begin building the depth of the forehead. A small snake of clay will be the beginning of his nose. Perform some rhinoplasty to blend his nose into the face. We're looking for the classic sloped triangle anime nose. Now we can move on to his eyebrows. Make him super angy and broody. Using the back of the knife, his mouth is cut in. His mouth is opened up a bit. A closed mouth felt too boring for this figure. So he has a proper scowl to show his desire for revenge. His eyes are defined, but left hollow for now. He may be hot, but his face is cool. So now we can fill his eyes in. His sclera are filled in. I drilled a hole to attach his faceplate to the armature. His head gets filled in with another blob of clay. And we can start on hair. I sketched out a rough idea on his head and apply bacon bond to adhere new clay. Clay doesn't hold on to baked clay well, so it acts as the glue. He currently has a balding but refusing to shave hairstyle similar to the early stages of my Wardell amiibo, but we'll fill in the top soon. His entire design is an amalgamation of kit bus art, fan art, and his design from Legend of Vox Machina. This figure is set during the Briarwood arc, so some iconic late game items won't be on this figure. Here we're making a haircut that's short on the sides, with big noble sideburns and longer hair up top, which is my favorite Percy hairstyle. His short hair gets textured with a billion little flashes. And my second favorite part, the mask. Cover his face lovingly with plastic wrap. This keeps the new clay separate from baked clay. Cover his face with a sheet of clay to make the base. I want the mask to actually be wearable for the figure. Take some darts out of the clay on the top and sides. This helps the flat clay become round without thinning areas. Place it back on the figure and blend out the cuts. To turn this ski mask into a plague mask, trim it to better fit the face. After a pre-bake, I trace out the rough design so I can further trim and plan out details. It kind of looks like a certain Pulp Fiction character, which is the least descriptive way I can say that. Using the knife, scrape the edges to the sketch line. Apply more bacon bond, and add two snakes of clay to create a lip for the beak connection. This helps blend the gap between mask and beak. I start with the top half of the beak. I 
add a smaller lower beak in the same way. It looks a little too toucan, so some minor trimming is required. To find the edge. Percy needs all the edge. And smooth the surface out with a healthy coat of isopropyl alcohol, which lightly melts the polymer clay. The rest of the detailing is just basic shapes. For the list, I sketched it out to be proportionate with his figure. The list is made from plow plate, plow rods, and epoxy putty. The barrels are made from rods measured against my sketch, totaling six barrels, with one center barrel for structure. I place two barrels next to the center one, and use Tamiya thin cement to glue them together. Stack two barrels on top, and once it cures, place the remaining two on the bottom to complete the pepper box's flower shape. Cut out some plot plate for the end of the barrels. If there's a real term for this part, I couldn't find it. Glue them together and let fully cure. I want the barrels hollow and functional, so drill out every barrel from the tip. Which takes... forever. Two hours later. The tip is roughly clipped, but before we fix the shape, it must be sanded even. Clip out little triangles to make the flower. And further define with a knife. Note, I am exactly 0% showing proper knife handling safety. Basically, never hold knives the way I do. The rest of the list is built from epoxy and plow plate with wire on top of the barrels. Finish. With the mask done, we can continue the hair. Apply more bacon bond, and we start the anime spikes. Blend them while leaving them partially separate. And if there are any that are comically large, trim them down. We only need a hundred or so. and attach to his armature. His body is filled out a bit, leaving joints free for posing. I tend to fiddle around with things like that, so I leave the joints free until I'm 1000% sure. Once it's locked in, we can fill the joints to set it. It doesn't have to be pretty since it'll be covered later. basic musculature to keep everything proportional, and begin adding a nicer skin layer. I also gave him a little booty, which I later make huge even though it'll be fully covered. Only I and you guys know he is a secret dump truck. I'm a huge fan of D&D character designs with high boots and floofy pants. It's one of those design aspects I repeat way too often. Just apply blobs of clay around the legs and blend upwards into the pants. To give the impression that he's wearing clothing, add snakes of clay, and blend out to create natural wrinkles. Just a note, I did not cut my finger due to my terrible knife handling tendencies. My pasta machine broke, so I took it apart, and some of those metal pieces are sharp AF. So if you buy a pasta machine with bent internal metal pieces, just get a refund. It's better than cutting your finger picking a piece up. Hey look, wrinkles! The top edge of his pants are defined the same way. His vest is cut from flat clay and blended onto him. If you've ever sewn or patterned clothing, it makes that step a lot easier, if you already know the general shape. I further refine the shape of his vest and add wrinkles. 
I kind of jump around to working on different parts. It's hard to keep attention on a single part through to finish, so I jump between body parts often. Carve out large creases and wrinkles from the pants to represent their puffiness. The jacket cuffs are added around the wrist. The shirt collar starts with a rectangle around the neck, which is blended onto the figure, and then folded downwards. He gets a tied scarf as well. Unfortunately, the figure is set before Percy gets his raven skull brooch, which he wears on his tie. The tie is just a blob of clay smooshed under the collar and onto the front in two segments. Fabric folds are always fun to work on. Jacket time! The jacket will be removable so we can paint the back of the figure and bottom of the jacket unhindered. To make sure it fits, the figure is covered in foil and the clay is draped over. Additional foil is used to give a wind-blown motion. His jacket collar is cut and added similar to the other clothing. He's finally looking like himself instead of a male dancer. Basing time! I cut out a ton of squares from XPS foam. The tiles are glued down with Mod Podge. It'll be a rubble-covered street area of white stone, so it doesn't have to look perfect, and I later remove parts of the tiles to make it look more run down. Once the glue is set, trim off all the excess. the tiles, spread out some spackle and stipple. It was too thick so I had to thin it with water a little bit. Rubble, stones, and sanitized dirt are spread around the base. You can use regular dirt from outside, just put it in some foil in the oven. Baking the dirt will kill anything in it. You don't want anything to sprout or mold from the figure. To secure the dirt, use a dropper to add isopropyl alcohol, followed by a watered down Mod Podge. The alcohol pre-wets everything so the Mod Podge can flow into the dirt instead of just lying on top. To base coat and prime, mix the paint with Mod Podge. The Mod Podge forms a shell, sealing the foam, so the foam doesn't soak in all your paint. Just be smarter than me, and add more paint to your mix. The black wash is next. 
Combine black paint, water, and a drop of dish soap. The soap breaks the surface tension of the water. I'm thinking of a dramatic base instead of super realistic, so we're aiming for dark wash, bright highlight. It always pulls me out of anime when they use real pictures for the background instead of drawn or painted. It's easier and cheaper, but it looks weird, so I don't want that for Percy. Dry brush a light gray over the base to bring out the dramatic highlights. Dry brushing is easy peasy. Put paint on your brush, then remove almost all the paint from the brush. Finish. Percy has been primed. Percy Prime's finger broke off, so that'll get resculpted right at the end. The list has also been primed. I'm honestly more proud of this gun than anything else in this figure. I always start with the base skin color, although I normally shade the skin later on. The base tone just helps the rest of the figure look better while I'm working on other parts. With the base skin done, I start focusing on everything that'll be covered by the jacket edition. get an airbrushed look with hand painting. Thin your paint, even if it's pre-thinned. The repeated layers will cover without brush strokes, so you can cover wide, flat areas without an airbrush. I have an airbrush, but it's more fun to paint than mask everything and clean the airbrush a billion times. an airbrushed look with just hand painting. You'll see in some of the progress, the jacket has a yellow lining. As it turns out, it looks awful. It is later repainted. The tie and the shirt are base painted. Been shaded and highlighted, followed by the vest. You can see how overpowering the yellow ended up. Trash. The shoes are given a general leather treatment, so we can shade the pants. The creases and wrinkles will be shaded as well as the inner legs and the back of the pants. The jacket will cause the entire back to be heavily shaded. Jackie gets a flashy yellow trim. For sharp edges, I do a rough edge line, overlapping the final edge slightly, then using a flexible curve tape. Mask the edge with tape to cover the yellow trim. Paint over the edge of the tape with a clear coat, or in this case, yellow. This fills any gaps, so the line comes out crisp. Then cover the excess yellow with the jacket's color. Then remove the tape and it's done. Me being myself, I was required to include the names on the barrels.
The list is a six barrel pepper box with five names on five barrels, each name disappearing upon completion. This leaves one barrel completely blank. The final barrel was a mystery in the campaign, only being fully cleared up in the wrap up episode. The animated show has an easter egg showing the final barrel belonged to Percy himself, which Taliesin actually believed during the campaign. But Matt Mercer explained the blank barrel represented the endless cycle of revenge. Once one list was completed, it would only be replaced with a new list with more names. This model includes all five names, since I'm imagining it's set during the first day or so in Whitestone before any names had been cleared, and obviously when the list still exists. The trigger part will be added once it's in his hand, but it's like 98% done. With his back shaded and ready, it's time to say bye to his cropped jacket. I shaded the jacket lining before attaching, since it'll be difficult to reach later. The jacket is secured with a strong CA glue. This is my first time doing a detachable piece, and the gap is a little bit super obvious, so that'll be filled with CA glue and baking soda to bulk and smoothed out with epoxy clay. The fabric creases were defined to show the jacket's movement. Thin coats are important when meshing painted and unpainted surfaces together. It's easy to go a little too strong and end with lines separating the two areas. His skin is shaded and highlighted minimally, enough to be visible but not stand out. I don't want harsh lines on his face. With the face done, he's given a matte coat. I cover certain parts with gloss varnish to bring their shine back. The eyes, list, buttons, and mask are coated. Matte coats are good for protection and uniformity, but metal pieces will end up dull so they need gloss. We're ready for the final shots. Thank you to anyone who watched this video. This project took forever, but it was worth it for the one and only Percival Fredrickstein von Musil Kowalski de Rollo III. First try. If you're interested in seeing future projects, please consider subscribing. To everyone, bidet and beep beep.